Blender has come a long way. As a free and open source powerhouse, it has revolutionized the 3D industry, attracting millions of artists worldwide. However, its widespread adoption comes with a growing trend, the reliance on add-ons. For many artists, the default Blender experience isn't enough. To improve workflow, speed up rendering, optimize scenes, or add essential functionality, add-ons have become an essential part of the equation. This raises a big question. At what point do we look beyond Blender to something that offers it all, an application like Houdini? Houdini, unlike Blender, is renowned for having many of the features promised by Blender's vast add-on ecosystem built into its core. Features like its advanced fluid simulations, procedural modeling capabilities, and particle systems are industry benchmarks. Houdini's built-in functionality for creating complex dynamics, such as cloth tearing or destruction physics, goes far beyond what Blender offers natively, even with add-ons. These tools allow for unparalleled control and scalability, which makes Houdini the go-to choice for high-end VFX and procedural generation workflows. Its procedural nature allows artists to create complex systems, simulations, and assets with unparalleled control and precision. On paper, Houdini seems like the logical next step for Blender artists looking to elevate their work. But the transition isn't as simple as it sounds. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Houdini is one of the hardest 3D applications to learn. Its node-based procedural workflow is vastly different from Blender's more artist-friendly interface. For someone used to drag and drop simplicity or intuitive modifiers, Houdini's learning curve can feel like scaling a cliff. Take Botanic, for instance, a popular Blender add-on that provides a library of ready-made drag-and-drop trees. Its simplicity is especially valuable for artists who want quick results without diving into procedural workflows. Unlike Houdini, where creating a similar tree library would involve designing procedural systems and scripting, Botanic allows artists to focus on their creative vision rather than the technical details. It's quick, convenient, and practical. Yes. Houdini allows you to create procedural trees that can look even more realistic, but that comes with a cost, time, and technical expertise. Not every artist wants to dive deep into procedural generation when they could simply populate their scenes with pre-made assets in seconds. This is where the Blender ecosystem shines. Add-ons like Extreme PBR Nexus, for example, provide access to an extensive library of ready-to-use materials allowing artists to quickly apply realistic textures without the need for procedural setups. True Terrain 5 excels at creating intricate landscapes with tools that make terrain generation intuitive and artist-friendly. These add-ons make high-level results accessible to Blender users without demanding the steep learning curve of Houdini's procedural workflows, saving countless hours of production time while maintaining creative flexibility. For instance, with real-time cycles, you can achieve game engine-like rendering speeds in Blender by leveraging light maps. Houdini might also allow you to create similar optimizations procedurally, but it would take significantly more time and expertise. Consider add-ons like the City Generator. It allows Blender artists to quickly create detailed cityscapes with a few clicks, including dense urban grids, winding alleyways, and sprawling suburban layouts. These pre-configured options save time and make it easy to generate a variety of city types without requiring deep technical knowledge or extensive manual adjustments. In Houdini, achieving the same result would require substantial knowledge of procedural workflows, asset management, and scripting. If you have the experience to create a procedural city generator in Houdini, you probably don't need to use Blender at all. But for most artists, add-ons like City Generator provide an efficient, time-saving solution. They're designed for users who don't have the technical expertise or the time to invest in mastering Houdini. This is why tools like these are so valuable to Blender users. It's also important to recognize that a Blender artist using add-ons is not the same as a Houdini artist. For example, a Blender artist might use add-ons to quickly populate a scene with pre-made cityscapes or for drag-and-drop vegetation, focusing on ease and speed. In contrast, a Houdini artist might build a custom city or foliage system from scratch using procedural nodes, which requires a deep understanding of workflows like SOPs and VEX scripting. This fundamental difference highlights how each tool aligns with different creative and technical goals. These tools cater to different mindsets and workflows. 
A Blender artist often prioritizes ease of use, speed, and creativity, relying on add-ons to simplify and streamline complex tasks. Houdini artists, on the other hand, are typically more technical, building everything from the ground up with an in-depth understanding of procedural systems. This difference means the two types of artists rarely overlap completely. Each gravitates toward the tool that best aligns with their workflow and goals. And let's face it, most Blender users buy several add-ons a year. With an average price of $25 per add-on and many artists purchasing 10 or more annually, it's easy to justify spending $250 on a Houdini Indie license. That's roughly the same price, but opens the door to a much broader set of features. Still, there's more to consider. Many of us have poured countless hours into mastering Blender, building workflows around it, and developing muscle memory for its shortcuts and quirks. Switching to Houdini would mean starting over, and while its potential is undeniable, Blender remains an artist's playground, fast, adaptable, and enjoyable. It's not about abandoning what we love, it's about expanding our toolset. Here's the good news. It's not an either-or decision. Blender and Houdini can coexist beautifully. Blender excels at modeling, sculpting, and rendering, while Houdini shines in procedural workflows, VFX, and simulations. By combining the two, artists can leverage the best of both worlds. You could model assets in Blender, using add-ons to speed up your workflow, have then bring them into Houdini for advanced procedural manipulation or simulation work. Alternatively, Houdini's powerful tools can complement Blender's rendering and scene-building strengths. This hybrid approach allows you to use each tool where it's strongest, rather than trying to force one to do it all. Blender is free, approachable, and endlessly extendable with its vibrant add-on ecosystem. Its accessibility continues to attract a wide user base, offering a gateway for newcomers and a versatile platform for seasoned artists. Even as Houdini offers advanced capabilities, Blender's ease of entry and supportive community keep it at the forefront for artists who value a balance of simplicity and functionality. Houdini is powerful, complex, and designed for procedural mastery. While it might be tempting to jump ship for the all-in-one promise of Houdini, the reality is far more nuanced. Add-ons like Botanique, Scatter, Tear Painter, Real-Time Cycles, and City Generator have made Blender indispensable for countless artists, providing solutions that are both accessible and efficient. Should you abandon Blender for Houdini? Probably not. Should you learn Houdini? Absolutely, if your projects demand it. The future of 3D isn't about choosing sides. It's about embracing tools that complement each other. Blender and Houdini together can unlock creative possibilities that neither could achieve alone. And that's the best part. We don't have to choose. We can use both. <laughs>